Hey guys, today we are talking about ditching day. So you are wanting to be a flight attendant, you are either in training, you are contemplating uh, to become a flight attendant, or you just got your CJO and you're like, yay, I got my CJO, let me tell my family, my uncle, my brother, my sister, my kids, but, but I can't swim. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Now, the big question is, what do you do if you can't swim? Or even if you can't swim, um, what is to be expected when we go ditching? Uh, now, part of the training is really important because um, they want to prepare you uh, to, you know, they, they want to prepare you for anything. And obviously, a plane is above ground and it could also be above water uh now knock on wood and the you know the plane does not have to uh obviously go into the water but if it does um and it's happened uh, i believe it's the hudson bay um with united uh, when it did um crash into the ocean um it was actually able the flight attendants were able to help the people within a time limit and uh, most people survive. So, um, you know, due to that training, it helps you to be able to attend to your passengers very quickly um, in a timely manner so that you can get as many people out of the plane as possible before the plane starts sinking into the water. Now that, I mean, the odds of you actually, you know, landing the correct way in water and rescuing everybody is very minimal. I just want to be honest with you. If the plane, if it is a plane, a planned crash, a crash a landing. So if it is a planned, if it is a planned crash landing, um, then you have a lot more chances of survival. Um, if it is a unforeseen crash, something that you don't have time to plan, chances of survival above water is very minimal. So I just wanna let you know that. Now, when it is planned, which means the pilot knows something's wrong with either the hydraulics, something with the motor, and as it's descending, it knows that it won't make it to the runway that is coming close, or any runway for that matter, and it needs to land immediately. Now, it could, it probably has a choice or no choice, could have a choice to uh, land on land or land on water. Um, they, I'm sure, choose uh, water over land because obviously a crash on land um, can injure a lot of people, can kill people. Uh, you know, there might not be um, a street where they can land the plane. Um, and there's, you know, the population lives on land, obviously. So I think if they had a choice, they would definitely go to the water. Um, there's more chance of survival and, you know, killing less people on water. Um, the planes are equipped to float. Um, I want to say between 15 and 20 minutes. They do have at the belly of the plane a material. So when they are fabricated, when they're built, they make sure that this material, which is a floating material, um, can help sustain the weight of the plane as it lands in water. Now, you are very limited before the plane will eventually sink. It, it will not float forever. Um, so the, the way that they fabricate and they build this plane uh, and, and they put these floaters under and within the, the frame of the plane, it will help you uh, it will give you that time. It'll give us 
uh, flight attendant the time to evacuate the plane in a timely manner to get all the passengers out if possible. Now, with that said, ditching. Um, so ditching, ditching, you guys. Okay, is it easy? To me, it was. To others, it wasn't. Now, to me, it was because I'm a swimmer. Um, I've been swimming since I'm two. Uh, I remember my parents had a swimming pool. I was a fish in the sea. I love swimming without any floaters or any device on me. I'm, um, I'm a mermaid in the water. Now, a lot of people are not. And for those that are afraid of water, it can be a little difficult and intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. My roommate, for example, was petrified. She never really verbalized in details how she was feeling about water, but I saw it firsthand when she was faced with a situation uh, when we did the drill. Um, now, the way that it happened with my airline is that we did two things at once that day. We uh, learned how to extinguish fire and uh, the first half of the day, and the other half, uh, we did the ditching. So we were separated in two groups. Um, you could start off with ditching and then do the fire, uh, and this was outdoor, the fire was outdoor, or vice versa. You can start with the fire and then do the ditching, or do the ditching and then the fire, whichever. Um, I did the fire first, so they show you how to put you know, your your uniform or whatever it is that you need to protect yourself and extinguish fire. And then once you're done with that, then you walk over across the street to this huge building, which specializes in ditching or any kind of courses related to water survival, rescue, etc. So you walk in and you're waiting. So I remember we had to walk down the stairs and we were waiting. We could see the pool through the glass and uh, we were waiting to be called and we were a small group i want to say maybe i want to say like 14 maybe 15 total i could be wrong um i think 15. yeah um it's so when our group was called we were to go up the stairs uh get into her bathing suit um you know put all of our belongings in a locker and uh, we were asked to be very quiet because it is a drill and they are taking notes and they want to see how you're going to react in this very tension prone situation now the day prior to ditching they simulated what was going to happen on water but obviously we were doing it inside of a uh, closed uh, quarter so we were told, I mean, I can't get into details because those are things that are very particular to the airline. So I have to be careful what I say. Um, but when it comes to drills, they did teach us what to do, okay, as a group. And so, um, and there was no water, but they showed us how to get in some floaters and whatnot. Like I said, I can't really, I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, and so we practiced the drill and we did the same drill on water. So when we did do that, um, it was different this time because it was not just simulating, it was actually doing. So it was very intimidating for those that did not feel comfortable in the water. Now you are, to do the same drill uh, one at a time. So let's say you are to jump into, let's say um, water, or if you are to jump into a safety um, survival raft, um, you are given a vest to put around your neck and you are told to inflate at the proper time. Now, when you do inflate that particular vest, it is not like the vest that you would find at some sliding, uh, you know, sliding park or what do you call it? Those water parks where you have like these comfortable vests that you can click on and off and whatnot. It is not like that. The vests that they give you are very tight around your neck. And that's what a lot of people freaked out about. 
Um, it is unusual to feel pressure around your neck, especially when you're scared of water. Um, so when you are faced with a situation, you are thrown in water. You're not thrown because you are throwing yourself if you have to go. Um, so to give you a scenario, you're in a raft with maybe 12, 15 of your peers, your colleagues, and you're given a scenario where you need to jump out of it, okay? Um, so when you do have to do that, you can't stand up and jump in water. You have to stay seated and you have to throw yourself backwards. So already just sitting <laughs> your back to the water can be very scary for some of you. And um, <clears throat> you have an option to block your nose if you want to, hold your breath. Um, so basically you've got to know that you need to inflate this vest and you need to let yourself go backwards. Now it is confusing to the brain because when you impact in the water and you are upside down, it could be very disorienting uh, if you've never done that before. And you have something around your neck which does not allow you to go too deep in the water, but the fact that you hit your head and you're kind of like midway in the water and then it just pops you back up um, and then you're kind of like your first instinct is to grab whatever's around your neck because it is suffocating. Remember, it is keeping you afloat this way. <laughs> so your hands are free, but it, it, like your whole head is held up high. So, and it's very strangulating. So, <clears throat> and <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> yes. Um, so for a lot of people, it was very nerve wracking because they felt like, oh my gosh, I can't swim. So their hands were free. Their neck, you know, the, the vest was very strangulating and they were just kind of panicking at that point. So, um, I'm not going to name names, but, um, there was quite a few and I can count on my hands. So let's say we were 15. I can count on my hand how many people were freaking out. And when I say freaking out, they were screaming, freaking out like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't swim. And there was actually a lifeguard there that's present who is watching to make sure that you are okay. But then you also have the instructors. They're like, calm down. You're fine. Take a deep breath. You're going to be okay. Relax. You're okay. You're floating. You're fine. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure that you guys understood that. Now they, I don't know if I should say it or not, but, um, they want to simulate an incident where your inflatable may not float. Okay. So it may not be you. It may be you. So when that happens, um, I'm trying not to say too much. <laughs> this is hard. Um, if you're not a swimmer, I think it's good to verbalize it to instructor prior to doing the drill. He needs to know where um, you stand because if you're not comfortable in water and you can't swim and, he, and if you are picked um, to simulate maybe a vest that is not inflating, then you might be in big time trouble. You might think that there's something wrong with your inflatable. Uh, and, and there's probably nothing wrong. It's just part of the drill. All right. So I don't know if I should have said that. Uh, so long story short, I need you guys to be familiar with water. Um, if it means going to your local pool, uh, if it means to just kind of practice, you know, kind of going backwards in water, that will definitely help you. So you'll get used to how it feels. Um, and if you can find one of those vests, Try them on, put them on. Um, not the ones like I said that you find in most, you know, if you go kayaking or whatever, that's, that's not the type of vest they give you. It's really around your neck and I don't know where you would find that other than in, you know, in a plane. Uh, I'm sure they sell them out there, I'm pretty sure, but um, just remember it's a very uncomfortable and weird feeling to have something around your neck really tight. Uh, you know, it's not something I've ever felt before. So you, so just, Close your eyes for a minute and just picture yourself throwing yourself backwards, hitting your head in water, kind of, you know, your whole head's in water at this point, and then your floater is bringing you back up, but then it's strangling you. 
So like I said, your first instinct is to grab the vest and to push it down a little to just get a breath. But the water, if the water's moving, I mean, obviously if it's an ocean, it will be moving. Um, you know, this thing kind of hits you and it's, it's, it could be very taxing and, and, and stressful. So, um, with that said, if you're comfortable in water, it's a little shock, but it's nothing, you know, it's nothing unusual uh, other than falling on your stomach and, and you know, uh, <laughs> making a big splash. And uh, so that could be easy for you. Uh, if you're not used to water and you've never ever swam before, um, you know, it is a little scary and I'm not gonna lie, there's some people that, um, they didn't do too well, you know, they really were panicking, but they got themselves together in water, took a deep breath and just, you know, um, so with that said, I don't know if that helps at all for you guys. Um, I, that was one of my drill that I was looking forward to. So that didn't really do anything to me. They even asked the people that were comfortable with swimming, they asked them to go for a, a swim because we we're all wet already and people were getting out. Some of them couldn't wait to get out and just leave. And they said, whoever wants to go for a swim and uh, you're more than welcome. So there was five of us that were just crazy water lovers. And I remember he whistled, took a picture while we're up in the air. I think he did a boomerang, which was really cool because he posted it in class afterwards. And it was so much fun to see us just kind of doing crazy things in water. You see us coming, going in and coming out. And so I remember he blew the whistle and we just kind of swam across and came right back. So it was nice because, you know, you've been on water for about, it's about an hour. The drill is about an hour long. And those are the things that we do, which I can't discuss, and I'm sure you'll understand once you go through it. Um, but it's nothing hard, it's just you know stuff that we need to know and what to do. But other than that, uh, as far as ditching, you guys will be going in water, and um, it will be uncomfortable, and you will have a vest around your neck, um, and it's a, a, it's a feeling that's pretty stressful. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, I know that is a very anticipated, uh, drill and I know it's very stressful for some of you um, Like I said the only way That it this you can prepare yourself for this drill would actually have to be if you can go to your local pool If you have a friend that has a pool and just kind of practice You know sit on one of their rafts or their floaters or whatever and just kind of throw yourself backwards and um, And just get that feeling because it's not easy. I mean, you know, your instinct wants to turn around. It's just, it's just uncomfortable unless you're a scuba diver and a lot of scuba divers just kind of throw themselves backwards. You know, they block their nose and they have the pedals and the, the oxygen and then they just do it that way. I don't like it. <laughs> I like to go forward if I have to, if I have to dive, I like to dive forward. I don't like backwards, but this is the way you have to do it. So, um, yeah. And the strangling thing is a little panicking, but you know what? You just kind of try this. Just remember, you want to pass. You want to pass your drill. You want to show that you're strong and you're brave. And this is real life, you guys, because if this happens, you need to be comfortable because you might be in the ocean for maybe an hour, maybe 10. There's sharks. There's, I mean, the situation, I know I'm like exaggerating, but if you're scared of a little pool with a lifeguard, imagine what happens if you're really you know, if that plane really crashes in the ocean, I mean, there's sharks, yes. Uh, hypothermia, it is super cold. And the pool will be cold as well. Um, and uh, there was stupid questions in class. But sir, is the pool cold? And uh, am I gonna be freezing? And uh, I remember the teacher rolling his eyes and I was just like, yeah, I'm with you, dude. <laughs> like, seriously. Guys, like, <laughs> that's real life. You know, just think about the Hudson Bay and when that plane crashed. Do you think the flight attendant had time to just kind of dip their toes in the water and be like, hmm, I think it's kind of it's kind of cold. We're not going to go. It doesn't work like that. Your adrenaline is kicking in. You are on survival mode. You need to get these passengers out within a minute and a half. They need to be out and they need to go in the rafts and we need to make sure that we, do, we need to do what we need to do and we need to get them out. And um, oftentimes, you know, sometimes with the stress and everything, you're jumping in the ocean. You're just throwing them out because you want to get them out of the plane before the plane, you know, kind of sinks. So you might be, you might find yourself floating. 
And if you are, like I said, the ocean is cold, this thing is uncomfortable, but guess what? You are breathing, you're above water, and that's the whole reason why it's there. Um, and that's why these drills are very stressful. Um, and they want to implement that this is not just, you know, if this scares you as I'm talking to you, if this scares you, maybe being a flight attendant is not for you, you guys. I mean, and don't, don't go into it thinking, ah, oh, it's never gonna crash. I'm fine. It's never gonna, nothing's ever gonna happen because it's to, it's to those people that things happen. I tell you, the ones that are super prepared and are ready for anything, nine out of 10, nothing happens. But for those that are so confident that nothing's ever gonna happen because they are just not ready to cope with the problems, bad things usually happen, unfortunately. It's just, it seems like it attracts them because you're so like, oh, I don't wanna deal with that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And the, you know, it's just the cosmos, the, the you know, there's, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's just, you know, the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I lost my chain of thoughts, but um, you know what I'm saying. It's like the, mo the more that you, <clears throat> you're negative about something, the more it'll come to you. Um, so you, you just don't want that for yourself and, um, you know, everything can happen and just feel like, you know what, I'm going to be prepared if it does happen. So again, I don't mean to scare you. I just want to prepare you because that is real life, you guys. So that's why we spend four to five weeks on safety, security, you know, um, uh, safety procedures and this and this and that and drills. Now, do we spend any time to learn how to distribute food in the plane? No, I think we spend literally like, what, an hour on the last day of class. Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, did we spend time on knowing how to do certain things like, you know, like how to talk to clients and how to do, I mean, passengers and how to do, no, they don't tell you any of that, you know? They hope by interviewing you that you have the personality that comes with it, but it's all about safety, guys. That's what it's all about because you're there not just to serve them a nice meal and a nice drink. You are there to be able to respond in case of emergency, and one of the emergency is ditching. So you have to know what to do, okay? So I hope this is not a, a negative video for you. I hope, like I said, it didn't scare you, but just be prepared, please. And um, know that if you don't feel prepared, go and get prepared. You have time. Even if you've been getting your TBNT, which means thank you but no thank you, and you haven't gotten picked, it doesn't stop you from going and practice in a pool because you are eventually going to get it. It's like, you know, if you keep on doing something over and over again, you keep on getting no's, eventually you will hit a yes. And when they do say yes and you are faced with training, which is usually right after you get your CJL, um, you will be faced with ditching. And if it's something that you fear so much, then you know what, conquer that fear, you guys. Just go out there, go in a pool, and do anything that you need to do to conquer that. So if water is your fear, go in the pool. Go in the pool, all right? If your fear is public speaking, Go and speak in front of people. And I know it's your fear, but you know what? The only way you can conquer it is if you put yourself in that situation. And um, eventually your brain will just say, you know what? I've done it. I've overcame it. And I feel better about it. That's the only way you're going to be able to conquer your fear. So I hope this helped. My loves, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I have a million more videos, which I'm preparing and I have to put them all together for you guys. Right now I'm in Colombia. I am enjoying the weather. Uh, mountains are beautiful and it's kind of chilly. So I got my jacket. <laughs> it never gets hot here, but I love my layover. So I'm having fun here, eating, visiting. Um, now we're meeting with the crew at seven o'clock for dinner. Um, I just wanted to take that, you know, 20 minutes to explain to you guys a little bit about ditching. So I hope that was helpful. Like I said, subscribe, subscribe below. And uh, don't forget your notification bell so you can be notified whenever I have these crazy videos about being a flight attendant. So good luck. And I hope I see more of those CJOs coming up. I want you guys to post them. Let me know where you're at. All right. See you later, alligators. Bye.